Recently in a video, I switched out my Vim file tree to fern.vim, and when I did so, the comment section was full of people being like, hey, have you tried COC Explorer? Try out COC Explorer, it's great. And okay, I went and tried out COC Explorer, and you know what? It's pretty good. The first thing you'll probably notice about it is that when you hover over anything, you get a bit of information about whatever it is you're hovering over. So in this case, a folder, we have the path, we have the time accessed, modified, and created. And if we go down to a file, as we can see, we also have, if it's a sim link, where it's actually linking to, the size of the file, and the same information as before. And the movement around it is the same as really any sort of Vim file tree. So J and K to go up and down. You can press L to go into a folder, but that doesn't actually CD you into the folder. If you want to close the folder, you can press H. If you actually want to CD into it, all you have to do is press enter on the folder. And as you can see, now we're inside of the document and we can go out of the folder by pressing backspace. And as you can see, if we CD into a folder, it will actually keep that open. Which which is maybe not the best, but I think you can disable that in the options. So if you want to close it now, just press H on it. And if you press L on a file, it will open up the file. Or your other option is to press enter on a file. And if you really want to use it, there is also a bit of mouse control as well. But being inside of Vim, it works about as well as you'd expect. So if we go and double click on, say, the repos here, and then we can double click on another file or another folder, I guess, and then double click on the file and that will actually open that up. I wouldn't recommend doing so, it's not really the easiest way to move around Vim. What is the easiest way to move around Vim, however, is you might have noticed there actually is two separate sections inside of this file tree. So we can jump to the top of the file section by pressing GF, and we can jump to the top of the buffer section by pressing GB. Now the buffer section is actually really, really interesting, so let's say that you're I don't know, working on some programming project. What we have in here is every single file that we have opened up in this current Vim buffer. So this means that, let's say you open up class A and then class B. Well, once you've finished working on class A, you might actually wanna go back to class B because you've added some functions that need to be called from that class. And this just makes it easier to actually find those files rather than having to dig through your file tree and remembering where they are. So this is just a quick list of everything you've opened, which I really wish that other file trees had. Now, something that I've seen in other file trees recently is an action menu. So I think the default binding is tab. I don't remember actually changing that. And then inside of here, we have basically all of the commands we can run. So if we wanted to do something like a select, and that will actually select that node, works as you'd expect. Now, obviously, I would recommend never actually using this because you're probably better off binding everything you want to use to key bindings, but if you ever actually need to use it, it is here. And one neat thing it does do is instead of having hard-coded key bindings in here, it actually shows you the key bindings that you've set up. So by default, add directory isn't set to MD. That's something I've done myself. And the same is true inside of the help menu as well. So you can get to that by pressing question mark. And one thing I didn't mention earlier is that this isn't actually a Vim plugin. It's actually a COC plugin. So I guess it's a Vim plugin by the law of transitivity, but that doesn't really matter. The point I'm getting at here is that the configuration for this isn't done through your vimrc or your init.vim. It will be done in your coc config. So this is just a big JSON file, and everything after this point right here is going to be for the explorer. So if you want to go and set the key mappings, my suggestion would be to go to the GitHub page, copy all of the default key bindings, and then go from there. Now, the reason why I mention this is that everything I demonstrate from this point onwards is going to be with my custom bindings. We can do things like open up a split. So I've got that set to capital H. So that is a horizontal split. And we can go and do a vertical split as well. So let's say we open up this one right here. We press capital V on that. And as we can see, that will then go and split this one right here. Now, when we actually have splits, it gets really interesting opening up regular files. So let's go and say, open up my Z profile. So if I press enter on this, it's gonna give us this prompt to go and select a window. So this will actually let us choose which one we want to replace. It's not just gonna go and replace one at random. And we have access to basic file operations as well. So if I go press capital X on something, that's going to try to cut it. If I press capital Y on something, that will try to copy it. And then capital P will do a paste. Now you might have noticed that when I press capital X and capital Y, that actually shows a little nerd symbol there. Now that's not enabled by default, but I think that it is nice to have a, a visual representation of what you're actually doing. And if we go down 
around the bottom here, we should have that Dolphin RC here just fine. As we do, we can press DD on that to try to delete it. And by default, that's going to try to delete it with your trash. And we can also make a file, which I've got bound to MF for make file. And we can do MD to do make directory. Obviously, you can always do a search by pressing slash. But another option is to press F. Now, F is going to bring up a fuzzy finder. We can go and just search for anything like we normally would with a fuzzy finder. So let's say our ZSHRC, and that will jump us to that one. Now, the interesting thing about this is it's actually dependent on where your cursor is actually sitting right now. So right now it's going to do a fuzzy find on level one of this directory right here. But if we go actually open up this directory here and then press F while we're highlighting on something actually in that directory, now it's going to do a search for things actually inside of that. So let's go search for, say, I don't know, PC Man FM. That will actually jump directly to that one. And there's also a recursive search key as well, but my suggestion would be to disable it because if you go and press it while you're on your home directory, you will go and freeze up Vim. Moving on from that, you might have noticed these symbols off to the left-hand side here. These represent the state of a file inside of a Git repo. So M basically means modified, and any of those icons can be changed with these variables right here. This one included as well. So the uh, modified one is this one right here. So explorer.file.column.git.icon.modified. It's JSON. Just accept the fact that the names are going to be really long. So by default, that's set to M, but you might want to use, say a nerd symbol or something like that. And basically all you do is just change that string and then it will use a different symbol. Now, it wouldn't really be that useful to just show you what things have been modified without giving you keys to actually go and actually do something about it. So I've gone and changed these, but if I go and press GA, that will then go and try to stage something. So now as we can see, that has been staged because the color has changed to green. And if we press GR, that will let us unstage it. Now there isn't things like you know, making commits or anything like that. Basically, it is just staging and unstaging. And also, there is a key to move around between things that have been modified or changed inside your Git repo. So if we press GN, that will go to the next thing, and GP will go to the previous. I can't remember what the default binding is. I think it might be like C square bracket or something like that, but I can't exactly remember. Now, you normally expect a Vim file tree to be on the left-hand side, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So if we go back over to the COC config, and let's actually go down to the explorer.position. So I've got it set to left right now, but we can also go and set it to say floating. Now floating is actually an interesting one. So we save that. I don't think it's gonna change now. Now we have to open up a new Vim buffer. So if we open this up here and open up the file tree, as we can see, it takes up most of our screen. Now, because of my color scheme, it looks a little bit funky, but if your color scheme is set up properly, it will probably be fine. Personally, I don't really see the point of having it like this, but if you want to have it be floating, that is an option for you. Obviously, if you're using a older version of Vim that doesn't support floating windows, that will be an issue, but otherwise it's going to be perfectly fine. But your other option is to also have it on the right-hand side if you somehow have gotten used to doing that. And you also have the option to do a tab as well. So that means the file tree would just take up an entire screen, but on a separate tab. If the window is floating, however, you can actually go and modify how it looks with all of the explorer.floating variables inside of here. And these are set in the exact same way as we saw before. So this one takes an integer. So basically, explorer.floating.height and then colon, the number you want to set it to. Pretty straightforward. I have noticed that this breaks a tiny, tiny bit if you are trying to use it with easy motion. So if we do space space J, as we can see, some of the letters are just being put in really weird locations. And let's say we jump to this one right here. It actually puts the cursor where it shouldn't be. It should be off to the left-hand side here. If we open something up, if we go back into it, I guess, it will actually put the cursor back to where it should be. So it's not a major problem. I also noticed that sometimes if you quit out of easy motion, it won't actually clear the letters off the screen, but that's only an occasional thing. I haven't, yeah, there we go. Sometimes it also changes the highlighting of text and this letter's stuck here. Just don't use easy motion while you're trying to use COC Explorer and you're gonna be completely fine. There we go. That's how long it actually takes to do a selection. If you actually try to move while that's happening, it's gonna actually move the selection to the thing you move it to. So, I'm guessing there's some optimization that needs to be done there, but generally I don't really use this inside of Vim anyway. It's just a slight annoyance and it makes it harder to work with multiple files at once.
Also, I haven't found an easy way to make it, so if the COC Explorer is the last buffer you have open, it will automatically quit out of Vim. Now, there might be a way to do this inside of the settings, but I haven't actually found it. Now, generally, this isn't really a problem because I usually have it so when I open up a file, it goes and quits the file tree. But if that doesn't happen, I would like to make it so it does automatically quit. I guess I could probably adapt my Netru hack to make it work for CRC Explorer, but I don't know. So this seems like a really, really cool file tree. It seems to be about as fast as Fern, at least if you ignore the fact that the selection thing is weird. And some of the extra features actually are really useful. Now, I'm not going to use most of them, but the buffer feature honestly makes me want to stick with this. And I think I might keep using it for a while, but I don't really like being tied to COC because maybe one day we're going to move away from COC and move to some other way to do code completion. And I don't want to have a bunch of plugins tied to that and make it so it's going to be much harder to actually leave it. But if it's just my file tree, I guess I can replace that if the time ever comes where I need to leave it. So, I don't know. I think I'll keep CRC Explorer around for now, at least until someone in the comment section for this video tells me about some other file tree that's even better than CRC Explorer. So I think that is pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinion, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Montezar, Joseph, Peter D, Rode, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikhail, Nate Dog, Nephite, Tease, and Zilver. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be some links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, Libra Pay, and all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available on many uh, platforms, and I've got this channel available on Library, Odyssey, BitChute, BitChute, and a bunch of other places as well, if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.